What up? So, uh, it's been a pretty action-packed month in California. First month of legal cannabis sales. Uh, went, you know, plenty of hiccups from different perspectives, but generally smooth. Uh, you know, we didn't run out of pot. Uh, the, you know, the cert, there was never an impact that stopped the supply chain completely. And even, you know, especially, you know, there's some arguments about whether patients are getting screwed over in the end. Aside from that, their acts, their access was never hindered. Prices, yes. And also, there's a lot a lot of confusion this month. People blaming things uh, on AMA, Prop 64, that would have happened anyway under MRSA. And that kind of void, everyone, you know, I, everyone just kind of blames it on legalization. But there was there was a lot of things in the pipeline anyway. Uh, but of course, it all uh, started January 1st. We did uh, over at Green State. We pulled together uh, some sales data from a bunch of awesome dispensaries that were kind enough to share with us and, and gave our best guess on how much pot uh, was sold amongst the about a hundred about a hundred people could sell marijuana legally in California to people over the age of 21 on January 1st. And then even even within a couple days, that number was up to like 113 and just up higher, higher, higher. Uh, so, you know, that keeps going up. But on that day, it looked like about $6 million total was made throughout, the, chopped up through those 100 dispensaries. So uh, the one of the data companies I was speaking with said that, uh, turned out that in turn uh, was like a hundred and fifty percent bump from last year. So it's not it's different with California than other states. I feel like because we just had a you know access has been so different here for so long. So it was wasn't going to be the way if people who wanted access to cannabis have all have had pretty simple access to cannabis at least for the last decade or so. Of course there was hiccups before that. Uh, people getting hit, a lot of people going to jail, but. The access has been there. Um, now, it, with legalization, like at, in other places, it wasn't like that. So when they, when the doors opened there, it was like, oh, you know, kick, they're going to kick them in. Here in California, we have the most pot in the world, is what it is. Uh, taxes. Taxes have been huge back to that. Uh, and it varies so much from, from municipality to municipality. Uh, one thing that was crazy uh, in Berkeley and Oakland. Okay, two, two cities share a border. A uh, $50 eighth in Berkeley is gonna run $5 cheaper out the door because of taxes. You pay an extra $5 in taxes on that same thing in Oakland. And now the city of Berkeley is actually discussing uh, lowering that tax rate even further. So that discrepancy might even spread. Uh, other crazy things that happened this month were, you know, longtime providers closing their door. A lot of people, it was sad. Uh, folks like on the rise, uh, they kind of had a count countdown to January 1st. Like, hey guys, you're not, not going to be able to buy our products anymore. Uh, you know, the, the world of microdosing is crazy. And all these longtime providers who provide these super dope edibles to sick people for decades are, are getting hit by the concept that uh, the, the responsible dose is 10 milligrams. Like back in like 09 when I got to California, I'm not claiming I'm some, you know, heavy hook kid, but uh, when I got here, we when we first started seeing labeled edibles with milligram uh, milligramage on them, which I I would call I would guess would be the bang bar, and I'm pretty that 60 milligram bar was the first thing I can remember seeing that kind of packaging on. Uh, blew up from there and then we got the Corovas not long after that Corovas had their lowest uh, dosage at the time was 170 milligram cookie and when people came in to start like for their first time to try an edible I would be like oh see take this Corova you just break this in half boom and I, mean, I never had a problem I never had anyone come back like oh you almost killed me you know um, it was a, a reliable starter dose and now we're in a world where uh, people can only buy 30, you know, 100 milligram dose. You know, that, that starter dose uh, I would give people back in the day, patients, is now 70% of the maximum recreational purchase. Like, and the dose is 10 milligrams. It's crazy, crazy times. One time I ate 500 milligrams 
wasn't for me, but there's a lot of folks out there with really seriously debilitating conditions uh, that they they eat the shit out of those. Those are huge for them, uh, and because they, they can buy one of those, they were able to buy a forty dollar square, cut it up into nine pieces that were super that had almost hundred milligrams in them each. So for forty dollars, they they had, you know, over you know ten now rec doses. And uh, of course, price that that price point, the the dollar per milligramage, uh, is one of the things that got hit hit the hardest on January first. But is what it is. Uh, so I like so as we mentioned, other people shutting down um, on and people modifying people that didn't close that are trying to you know still trying to make it happen, uh, like extract makers, hash makers, something like. Uh, folks that make uh, butane hash oil. If you're trying to uh, uh, explosive, like volatile solvent extraction, is one of the trickier uh, permits to get. Especially if you're trying to stay near home, uh, they might not. You know, if you're when you're trying to find a municipality to do that stuff like that, uh, that's a tough one. So some of the people, some people who are working on getting those permits, have switched to the solvent lists extraction permits which are you know a lot easier to grab so you see some companies temporarily trans transitioning from uh you know sauce basically the highest end bho products uh to now you know rosins and full melts uh temporarily hopefully but stuff like that uh is nuts it's nuts hopefully everyone can get it together and more municipalities see how much uh, money is coming into these other places that have been more opened up and want their piece of the pie. And in turn, those people will have an easier time finding a new home. Um, of course, the month ended on uh, a very sad note. Dennis Perrone, uh, the father of the medical marijuana movement in California, America, uh, you know, few, very, arguably the, the man with the biggest impact uh, on where things are this day for patients and now the industry the, uh passed away uh right at the turn of the month uh on the third on the 30th last saturday it was or excuse me not the 30th but it was recently uh super sad obviously everyone's bummed uh and it was dennis was out there till the end uh i had the privilege to speak uh at blunt talk in san francisco uh, with the folks from Paragon a couple months back, and Dennis came out, was super chipper. Uh, got to burn it down with him one last time, which was awesome. Uh, I, I had a blind, I already was smoking a blind when he walked in. I was like, oh, that's Dennis, <laughs> you know. When he, I knew he smoked cigarettes anyway, and uh, so I was like, oh, boom, here you go, woods with the goods. Got to puff a blind with Dennis the last time I saw him. Uh, what a guy! I met him the first time. Uh, back in 2010, right after I got to California, the High Times Cup was doing its first big American Cup, uh, and they were doing the judging at his Castro Castle. Uh, so I went out. Uh, my homie was came, flew out from Boston to help with that, and we ended up heading over to the city, uh, to the castle, checking out all the entries. Um, and uh, Dennis came out to say hi. I got the chance to chat with him for a bit, introduce myself. Um, he got a kick out of the whole, just flew out here from Boston to sell weed. Uh, it's like, oh, that's the right attitude, you know? So that, that was dope. That was dope. Uh, RIP to Dennis. What a guy. Uh, glad I got, got to spend a little time with him. Uh, so yeah, that was, January was crazy. Uh, things should balance out in the next couple uh, months on the weed side of things. Everything has to, like, supposedly everything's to be dialed in by June 1st. We'll see. Uh, a lot, yeah, we'll see. But nevertheless, uh, thank you guys for all reading my stuff. Go check out Cannabis Now, uh, Green State, uh, my Twitter. I try and keep uh, pretty up to date with whatever's popping in the cannabis world. So uh, go check those out. And uh, you have an awesome one. Have a great February. Uh, have a dope Valentine's Day with your significant other. Or if not, enjoy the ice cream. <laughs>